Need a faster Android? Tired of waiting for your phone to do stuff? Then watch this video. So as your phone starts to get sluggish and slow, it can get really annoying and you might be thinking about throwing it out or smashing it. But before you do that, keep in mind that there's a few tweaks and tricks you can use to get a little bit more performance and speed back out of it to make it perform like new again, potentially. In this video, we're going to be looking at some of the best hacks and tricks you can use to get the best performance out of your device. And you might be surprised by just what a difference some of these can make. So the first thing you need to do to ensure you're getting the best performance possible out of your device is to make sure it's up to date. That means that if Google has rolled out a new version of Android and it's available on your device, you want to install that because sometimes that will give you a performance boost. You might also find that your manufacturer's got some updates. If you've got a UI skin on top of your phone, this can help to speed things up as well. And likewise, if there's a particular app that you're noticing is starting to chug, then make sure that's up to date too because sometimes updating the app itself can bring much better performance. But if that's not an option, then something else you can do is to install a custom ROM. And this is an alternative to the official operating system and firmware that's provided by your manufacturer. And normally it comes from the open source community. Often these come with a significant performance upgrade, lots of cool features and things, but it does carry some risk. You're gonna need root access. And if you get it wrong, there's a small chance of bricking your device. However, if you were thinking of getting rid of your device anyways, and if it's no longer being supported by your OEM, then this is a good way to get a little bit more life and performance out of it, and potentially to upgrade to the latest version of Android if it's available for the model you've got. There's tons of articles on the website about custom ROMs, about flashing your device, about root access, so I'll leave some links in the description down below for you should you want to go that route. Another handy tip is to clear up your home screen, especially if the slow performance you're noticing is whilst browsing through the UI. So this means making sure there aren't too many big widgets on there, making sure that you don't have unnecessary feeds from whatever junk Samsung stuffed on there. Turn all that off. Better yet, make sure that your home screen is just one screen with a few icons on it, maybe in folders, and your phone will be much quicker to use and much less likely to stutter when you're swiping through and browsing around your UI. Likewise, choosing a different launcher can also sometimes improve the performance. Okay, so now we're gonna get a little bit more technical. The first one though is a old trick that most of you already know. We're gonna switch off the animations or at least turn them down. So to do this, you're gonna to need to go into the developer options on your device. And to find that, you first need to access, to turn on the developer options menu in your settings. So to access developer options, you need to go into your settings menu, find where it says build number and tap on this seven times. If you get it right, it'll say something like, congratulations, you're now a developer. And if you go back, you'll now have a new option to go into the developer settings. In here, you can find all sorts of cool stuff, but the one we're interested in is animation scale. And if you head over here, you'll see that there's animation scale for things like window resizing and um, app opening and closing. And if you turn those all off, then it's gonna remove the animations that you normally see when you know you click on an app and it kind of zooms into it or when you exit and it shrinks, minimizes. Instead, it's just gonna spring to life and appear in front of you. This can sometimes look a little bit jarring, but it also speeds things up because obviously there's no need to play a pretty animation. That's less for your system to do and it's less time between clicking on something and something happening. Don't leave this menu just yet though because there's a few cool options in here. Another one is forced GPU rendering. And if you toggle that to on, what that means is that your phone will now use the GPU by default to render any graphics, any 2D graphics, such as menus, such as icons. A lot of apps will already do this, but some won't. And by switching to the GPU, which is a um, graphics processing unit specifically intended for this kind of processing, you can speed things up and also lighten the load on the CPU. Doing this may drain your battery just slightly, but you might also notice that some apps are quicker. Try it out. If you think it's a decent compromise, then stick with it. And if you don't like it, you can always just turn it back off again. You might also find an option here to switch your GPU rendering engine to Skia instead of default. This is something else to try out, which might give you improved performance. Some people will say it does for them, other people not so much. I personally found that it negatively affected performance whilst I was using the Dolphin emulator on the Nokia 8 Sirocco, but your mileage may vary. And as some people have luck with it, give it a go again. And if it works for you, great. Those last two options might help you with gaming then, but if you want to improve your speed browsing, then you should try turning on data saving in Chrome. Data saving basically compresses things like images and videos before showing them to you on your browser. And this can not only save your data, as the name implies, but also help pages to load more quickly. One option that you hear quite a lot for improving your UI experience is to clear out your cache. So the cache is a space that your device uses to store files 
and settings and things that it might need later. The idea is to actually improve performance by providing information very quickly, ready to access, rather than it having to be loaded from scratch each time. For instance, in Chrome, the cache will store things like images and files, so you don't need to be downloaded every time you visit a website that you regularly go to. The problem is that over time, the cache can become too full, and not only does this take up unnecessary space on your uh, device, but it can also cause things to become slow because files become corrupted or lost, etc. and it needs to dig through all that data. You can move cache to data individually by going to your settings menu, finding app info, storage, and then clear cache. Or you can use an app specifically designed for managing memory, such as CCleaner. But I will say at this point that you shouldn't go too crazy with this because if you go overboard and keep clearing your cache and you'll actually slow things down because like I say, the point of the cache is to ensure that your phone runs smoothly by providing files that it's gonna need easily and readily available. Just as you shouldn't keep clearing your cache, you also should avoid using task killers. So those apps that are running in the background when you go into your multitasking menu, they're not actually causing any problem. They're paused and they're kept in the memory so that you went, when you want to use them again, it's easy to just resume without having to boot them up from scratch. Task killers that keep removing anything running in the background, anything paused, any paused processes, that means that then you're gonna to have to load those apps back up from scratch each time you want to use them. And this actually takes more processing power, it's actually slower, and it actually takes up more battery, so they're actually causing more harm than good. If you have a task killer and you think it's helping, you think it's speeding up your phone, it's probably because you have one misbehaving app that's being closed or several misbehaving apps. But far better than killing everything is just to find what those apps are and either change their settings or uninstall them. That said, some background services you don't want. Background services are things that run in the background, but without you being visibly aware of them. So for instance, your SMS app will have a background service because it needs to listen out for texts that are incoming. Although you've closed the app, it's still running in the background. These apps are useful, so you want them, but some apps will take advantage of that feature. To find out which apps have access to the background services, head back into your developer options and go to background check and there you can see which ones have permission and if you see something here that is using a background service and you don't know why just turn it off if it negatively affects the performance of that app then you can just turn it back on but otherwise you've just saved yourself some unnecessary work and hopefully sped up your phone a bit and saved battery life one of the things that really does slow down your device and use up battery is downloading large files in the background or installing new apps and you'll have noticed this yourself if you've ever got a new phone gone to install all your favorite apps and then started using it and it'll start stuttering, which is unfortunately not the best impression of a brand new device. And this is why auto-sync can be a problem. So an app with auto-sync is regularly checking the web for new information to download to make sure that it's up to date. This is a good thing. So for instance, Gmail has auto-sync so that it makes sure that you have all of the latest emails in your inbox each time you check. But at the same time, some apps will regularly auto-sync and you don't really need them to. Maybe you only need them to auto-sync once a day rather than once every half hour. So check the auto-sync settings in each app through their own settings menus and turn off anything you don't need because that is sucking up power and using up battery. But if all of this doesn't work and you're really looking to get the very best performance out of your device, especially for gaming, then you might be interested in overclocking your device. Gary's done some great videos on what overclocking means, so I'll link to those in the description down below. PC games will be familiar with the idea. It basically means that you're getting more performance out of your CPU by overriding the restrictions that are imposed by your OEMs. Obviously they're there for a reason, you can end up overheating your device, damaging the internals, so you need to know what you're doing and you need to be careful and you need to understand the risk. But if you have a rooted device and you download the right apps, then you can do this relatively safely as long as you know what you're doing and get a bit more performance out of your device, which you can actually notice in gaming and other real life applications. And finally, if none of that works, then just burn it all to the ground. One more thing you can try is just to set your phone back to factory settings. That'll remove all bloatware, it'll remove all settings that you might have changed by accident that could be slowing things down, and it's your best chance of making your phone perform as new because, in theory, it is as new. And then from there, you can try using all of these little tricks that I've just shared, but this time from a blank slate. And now you're gonna have the fastest phone you possibly could have. So thanks a ton for watching guys, I hope you found this video useful and interesting. If you did, then please leave a like, please share it around, that helps us out immensely. And comment down below to let us know what other hacks and tricks you can use to speed up your device. Maybe we missed some. Check out the full article, hit subscribe if you want more like this, and hit the bell button if you want notifications. And head over to androidauthority.com for your source for all things Android.